Last winter break, instead of going home, I decided to stay in school and take a winter class. In the end, it turned out to be one of the best decisions I've ever made. We just reached San Diego and we're actually here for like a winter class. So like Brown has these classes that you can take during the winter break because it's like a month long. This class is actually about the US border and it's really about like the culture of like the Mexican and American people living around the border and how that affects like the way they live. So we're gonna spend a couple of days right now in San Diego and then we're gonna hit down to Tijuana and Mexicali. I'm kind of like just gonna vlog like the next couple of days here in San Diego and down in Mexico. So you guys can kind of like get an idea of what it's like to take like winter classes or destination winter classes here at Brown. Oh my god! <laughs> What's that? Wait, is it dead? No. Are you trying for a dead turtle? No, he's chilling, he's moving. Is it real? Why are his legs like that? He said... <laughs> he said if I was a seagull, this would be a buffet. <laughs> Now we're at Chicano Park and it's a pretty interesting park with like the most number of murals of any park in the United States. <laughs> that was just, I, I think Chicano Park is very beautiful. <laughs> it's pretty interesting because you can see like how like indigenous people when they suffer from like gentrification or like being displaced, how they like express themselves and still maintain their strength and identity as a people. We fought hard for this land to make it a park for the community. Look at the murals, they all have to tell stories. They, and, and a lot of the people in the community can relate to those stories. The community feels, this is ours, you know? This is, this is our children's. For some reason, I imagined it would be like a straight line. I, I thought it would be like zigzag. Wait, it's right? not even a wall. Over there, <laughs> that, that tan fence. It's not existing. On yeah, the it's just a fence. Yeah, yeah. You could do that's really in the border. You could just in Mexico. Oh, wow. snap. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're like slim like that. Yeah, like you get like Slide a little you know, Or you can like hop over. Just do a little flip. <laughs> <laughs> little crab walk. Just squeeze right through. Oh, yeah. crab walk. Yeah, oh, crab walk. <laughs> So now we're in El Cajon and it's like little back there where a lot of the Iraqi immigrants came here and settled and it's really really nice and Hector actually grew up here so we're gonna go figure out where he likes to hang out. Um, El Cajon is as you know is a um, Spanish term for the box. Um, it's a Mexican, historically Mexican American agricultural town um, but also in the recent years has changed dramatically due to the Chaldean uh, Iraqi community. Well we're about to eat the California burrito. It combines both you know the American French fries with the Mexican carne asada um, so it really sort of represents Mexican American community here in El Cajon. Normally, other burritos you eat, they put like rice, beans, and veggies inside to like take up space. Now, this is just straight up meat, fries, and cheese, man. This is amazing. Here we're at like a detention center where they kind of like detain people that have illegally crossed the border. And so the difference between this detention center and like an actual prison is that they just stay here until they can get a court date. And that's like in an indefinite amount of time. So like you, they don't know like how long they stay here. It could be like a couple of months or it could go up to like two or three years. So we managed to find a lawyer here who's like representing some of these detainees. Present yourself yeah. at the border and then you mm -hmm. say you're seeking asylum. Okay. So the, the only way to do it is really to, to go to the border yeah. and then say you're seeking yeah. asylum. But he Yeah, it's, oh, okay. So we were filming and like taking pictures of the place. And, like a bunch of like people just came here and told us to like stop taking videos. It's stupid. Like they don't have, they should mind their own business. <laughs> that guy in the other van was talking to Jalem and he was like, you can't take any pictures. Cause this guy right here, the older guy? No, the younger, oh, the or the guy. other guy. And he was like, you can't take any pictures because it's for the safety of the people we're protecting here. Like who? Are they protecting here? Yeah, who are they protecting? Them? Yeah, amen, professor. That's stupid. <laughs> that was a great young man, wasn't he? Oh, he, was so interested. he was a lawyer. He got an asylum case one. Yeah, today. Yeah, for a Cameroonian yeah, who's been here for nine months. He works pro bono. Yeah, pro bono. He says he works for 
he's a regular business lawyer, but he works pro bono and um, he won the case. That's why he was in such good mood. And, and the guy will be released in a few hours. Oh, that's cool. And then he'll be able to go to his uncle in Maryland. So today we are going to Mexico, and right now we're at like the land port of entry. We're gonna walk across, we're not gonna take any like formal transport. Why are we walking? Like just to experience it and to see the people. We could have taken the Greyhound bus and go with the bus, but I think walking is really interesting. What's really interesting is that on the American side, we can walk to Mexico, just no, really no strings attached. But going the other way, we're going to have to go through customs. Really shows the asymmetry between the two countries that we can just go across, but we would have to wait to go the other way. All right, guys, so we just started walking towards the Mexican side. And we're all carrying our bags. And we're walking with like the locals. I was like, oh, the bridge is so pretty. And then like, look up there. It's wire. It's militarized. <laughs> yeah, so we just like walked across the bridge. It was like five minute walk. And then we entered like this gate. And we're now in Mexico. So did you put the date correctly? The date first, then the month? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I done that, but it's my birthday. <laughs> Thank you. We just crossed the border and like apparently you're not supposed to take any pictures. No, literally the federal agent comes over and is like, hey, like no pictures on that side. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, the second we get to that side, he's like, <laughs> and this one was like... <laughs> so we just reached the university here in Mexico and look at that view. That view is absolutely insane. Like I swear, like if I had this view, I wouldn't be late for class anymore. We're just waiting for the yeah, conference so to start. The on the um, it's there was super fancy. I'm Professor Evelyn Hoody Hart. I'm the one that worked with Laura to put together this program. So thank you very much, Colette, for um, welcoming us. We're currently right now in like one of those migrant shelters, and what it, they do is that they actually like take care of people that got deported from the U.S. and they don't receive a lot of government funding, so they need a lot, quite a bit of help from like donations and mainly volunteers. The people that we met at the migrant shelters were mainly people that were deported from the U.S. So I can't really show them in this video, but it was really eye-opening to hear their stories and to like get a better understanding of the different challenging situations that many of them were facing here. We talked a lot about American influence has hurt like uh, Mexican policies, especially regarding to like funding for migrant shelters. Uh, the current Mexican administration made a lot of promises to be pro-immigrant, um, but because of pressure from the United States, um, they took it just a huge 180, like one year into this term. Um, yeah, I think it's just that was disheartening, but it's like it's real. And like that, that happens. It's just one of the many instances of like what we call American imperialism. It's a story that's inseparable from the story of migration. We just reached the border, and it's really nice. It's like right at the beach, and all the walls have murals on it, so it looks actually like really lively and friendly. And there are people here selling drinks, selling food selling things. It's pretty amazing. It's like a very nice yeah. setting. Yeah. Okay, so how do you like the border? Very, very interesting. Very, very, very moving. Very lively, right? People divided. Families divided. They can't reunite because of the wall. But look what they're doing. They're doing a lot of wall art. And this wall is very interesting because it stretches out into the ocean. Yeah. Contextualizes them, and this class has taught me so much about things that I've never thought, ever considered. And now I'm thinking, wow, like what can I do to try and make a difference? To see the American side just try to fence it off, while the Mexican side is um, using it as like an art piece of resistance, is a strange relationship. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry for my head. We will come to the beach here in Playa de Tijuana, and there wasn't any bo physical border. We had this game we had as children where we would play beat the border patrol. In Spanish, it's, it's Gana la Migra. So all the kids would stand on the border to Mex from Mexico 
and we would run as fast as we could. The one that got the furthest was the one that won. So the because the border patrol would catch us, and they since they knew us because we lived here, so they would say, "Kids, go back to Mexico, go back to your home." So we would just run back, and that was it. <laughs> this is the most beautiful pair in the world. Uh, thank you. Yellow is trying to escape out. This is a hole in the wall. Can you fit? Yeah. But your hair can fit. But your hair can fit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, you can fit. I can. Look at Snark. You managed to take a picture. That would be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> you got stuck there, right? But they opened this gate up for about five minutes and they let families that are on either side of the border interact with one another. So while that's really wholesome, that's also pretty sad because they only get five minutes to spend with one another. Um, one of the artists was telling me about it and I was like, wow, that's really, really interesting. So we spend the better part of a day here at the border and it's been really interesting, like just learning so many things, talking to people here and like just getting to know like their life story. I think the most important thing like to really take away is that like people just want to like be with family, be with friends, and just be reunited. And like the wall just is stopping that. And so like the murals and the paintings, it just like represents like love and like community and what people really want things to be beyond the wall. and I was trying to discourage him. We look like such tourists, bro. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get us like around. <laughs> he looks so sad. <laughs> So like, it's very common in Mexican culture to put chili powder on a lot of fruits. Um, sometimes they even add salt. So there was another store where they had watermelon with salt, lime, and chili powder. That shit's fire. Right. Yeah. Woo. So tasty. One through five, one through five, one through five. Through Give five. a number. Now You're doing it with Ponya. Now count down, Zanab. Three, two, one. Four. Four seconds! Four seconds! Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Bring it over here! One, two, three, and four. It's better if you do it all at the same time. No, I feel like if you do it at the same time, it's gonna be one by one. Is is that's that's yeah, brutal. One by one. Yeah, pretty. It's crazy. They taste like sunflower seeds. No, they do not. Ooh. What do you think? How is it? Hello, darkness, my old friend. We just. Got to Mexicali. It was like a two-hour ride from Tijuana, and right now we're just gonna like go on a walking tour to explore the city. <laughs> but uh, Mexicali is really interesting because like the name Mexicali is like a mix between Mexico and California, and the city on top of it, which is Calexico, is also like California and Mexico, and the two <laughs> cities are like very like mutually intertwined. So I think that's like a really interesting like fact. But yeah. What do you think Mexicali should be called? Yeah, but also like Mexicali should actually be Mexifornia because Calexico, like the first part of California and the last part of Mexico. So therefore, Mexicali should be Mexifornia. So, not just math. Comment down below <laughs> what you think. <laughs> The building behind used to be like a municipal like state house and now it's become like a strip club. Hector, why does it become a strip club? Because there's people from the US who are not 21 years old, they come here and they participate in that sort of nightlife and it's right by the border so therefore it's one of the most visited strip clubs in Mexicali. In Mexicali there's a lot of like um, Chinese influence because a lot of the workers when they came over to the US they were kicked out and you can see like a lot of like Chinese characters around shops and like food. Your name came up as a citation on the acknowledgement page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you find my name on a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've been around so long. <laughs> no, we're like a Mexican Chinese restaurant. It was like and like professor said that like a lot of the food is like very different from what you normally get in Asia. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The 
broccoli's fire. I'm mostly gonna be eating broccoli. <laughs> what have you eaten so far? Try something and tell us how it tastes like. So Kira is an authentic white person. <laughs> now we're gonna try the Mexican sashimi. Which one should I have? Uh, anyone. This one? Yeah. And that okay. back is Where you go? Chef corn. What do you think? No, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Actually, it is pretty mushy. And like the reason why I think is because they didn't like burn the outside. And normally the outside is like a bit burnt, so you get like that smoky flavor and it's more crunchy. We didn't do it here, so that's why it's a bit mushy. So this is one of the not as good things. How many stars? I would say I'll give it average like five out of ten. It's okay. Like I would still eat it, but I wouldn't come here. Okay. The reason we eat in Chinese restaurants in Mexicali is that only the Chinese restaurants have big spaces, big enough for a big group like ours. And so when Mexicans have a celebration for a birthday, um, a wedding, they come to Chinese restaurants. It's very local. I've been trying to get rid of this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bite, bite into that part. Go, go, go. Right now we are currently crossing the border and there's a long queue to get into the US side because the security is a lot stricter. Our van actually doesn't even have enough seats so like we're both sitting on like one seat and like Kira's butt is huge so like I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm half a cheek in and I have to, I have to sustain this. I have to sustain So cruel. <laughs> Why are you both back here? They stopped Junaid and they stopped Zineb because Zineb's like a historically Muslim man. Um, and the guy was like, oh, nothing personal. But how did you get to Palestine? Who paid for it? What does your mom do? What does your dad do? Because Junaid's been to Pakistan. While well, we were there for like half an hour. So do you think it's racial Hello? profiling? Oh, it definitely was. I mean, they were questioning like Junaid's like background and his family. They asked like, what was Junaid's like uncle's date of birth? And Junaid's were like, how would I know? <laughs> Cause we were thinking, oh, we probably got stopped because we have all of your suitcases in the car. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. And Janae was like, it's not the suitcases. And we're, like, <laughs> we're like, how do you know? He's like, they were asking me about Pakistan. We were like, oh. Yeah. After that whole incident, we just went back to San Diego and took a flight back to Providence. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. It was really so much fun to just put together. And the whole class was just so enjoyable. And actually, um, there's a lot of footage that I didn't put into this video. Oh, so much more stuff. Um, I'm actually thinking of putting into like a part two video, and also maybe like zooming the others and like trying to see like their own reflections and thoughts on the things that we did. But all that's probably gonna be in like a part two video, and I might work on that like a couple weeks down the road. So we'll see how it goes. But mainly, I think I really made this video kind of like to affirm in myself the decision to like come to Brown. It was these kind of experiences that I wanted to have, things that I knew I would never have been able to be a part of if I went to school at home. So I think for me to like make this video and always have it here to like look back on and reflect is something that I feel is really important. But yeah guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Um, for the rest of the summer, I'll be posting weekly every Saturday. So hopefully you stick around for that. Somos de una escuela en un futuro. Soy un hombre sincero.